Now, one of the things that you may say is, well, my, the funds I'm in, okay, I'm doing asset class investing. I believe the markets work. Okay, but does the fund manager that you're using actually, is he in this area of the market? Because this is where you can have confidence in your portfolio and you can have peace of mind. If you believe markets work, you need to make sure that the funds that you're using are compatible with your market philosophy. Okay? If you believe that markets fail and you want to do speculative investing, then you got to align, uh, make sure that you align with this and stay on the internet all the time, watch TV shows, read magazines, look at all this information to try and make a decision on which stock it's going to be. If you're in either one of these two categories, there's a conflict. If you believe markets work, maybe 70% of the time, 90% of the time, but 10% of the time they don't work, you're gonna have a conflict. Because if the speculative part of your portfolio performs well one year and goes up 25%, for example, and the other side where you're using asset class investing only goes up 15, what's the tendency to do? Is it all over? Move it all over. The same thing as what happened in 2008 when people went to cash, okay? So you've got a conflict and confusion, anxiety, despair and resentment going on here. You're back into the investor dilemma with any of these three. But you may have a sense of power and control on this one because you're controlling your portfolio. I know what I'm buying, okay? This is where we believe you want to be, and this is where we are, asset class investing. Confidence and peace of mind. So bringing it all together, your true purpose for money, plus your market belief, plus your investment strategy, equals your personal investment philosophy, okay? How do you use your investment philosophy, okay, using asset class investment, investing eliminates speculative, speculative investment techniques. They're gone. You take the spe speculation out of your portfolio. You work with a financial professional who believes that markets work and offers asset class investing and provides education and discipline and coaching. Somebody that will keep you on target when markets drop. They will drop. It will happen again. Might not go down this far, but it will drop. And unfortunately, we kind of want that because that's why we get extra returns, because there's more volatility and risk in there. But we can minimize that to a degree. Want to ignore media hype. Turn off MSNBC. Turn off Kramer. Okay, it's investment. You don't want it, you don't need it. Uh, set a lifelong financial goal that helps you realize your true purpose for money. Focus on capturing market returns. The returns are there. It's almost like a free lunch. Utilize asset class or structured funds. Diversify prudently and identify your risk tolerance. If you want to use speculative investing, then pursue uh, speculative techniques to capture market inefficiencies and I hope you bet on the right person. And I hope they tell you. Work with a financial professional who believes in and implements active management strategy. Stay connected to all sorts of information. Okay, day trading, whatever. Read every article about stocks and options you can find. Wonder and worry about what might happen next. And whatever you do, don't miss the next hot stock tip. Okay? Or commodity. Or commodity, right. What is one way that you can be guaranteed to win the lottery. Buy all the tickets. <laughs> Buy all the tickets. Right. Do you know that, uh, I don't know if anyone has an insurance license. I do. But do you know that an insurance agent can come in this room and probably write a policy on every person in here for half a million dollars? Or a hundred thousand dollars? Or twenty-five thousand? Right? Is there anyone in here that knows when they're going to pass away? That has a clue, it's going to be next week, next year, whatever? 
No, I don't either. But an insurance company will come in and they'll put a policy on you. Do they know something you don't know? Okay. How can they do that? Law of numbers. Law of large numbers. Okay. They have mortality tables. They have the data on people. How long, when they were born, how long they live, what vocations they're in, all this sort of information. They can go back and they can look at that and they can come up with a premium. They gotta get you in the right category. Sex, age. Smoke, uh, not smoke. <laughs> smoking, not smoking, if you have diseases, uh, uh, what's your vocation, all these criteria. But they know what the risk is gonna be and they know how many are gonna die. What's their biggest problem? Getting enough people. That's, that's a good one. Getting enough people. Because if, uh, if 100,000, if four are going to pass away out of 100,000, they want to be at the 100,000 mark at least. Because then they know four people are going to die. What's the other problem that they have? They don't know who. Okay? So they've got to have the large numbers. Now, we've got... We're dealing with put what in life insurance? We're dealing with people, right? What are we dealing with with companies? People, they've come together. What happens to companies? They're born, they live, they grow, and they die. Or they get merged. And what happens, how do they die? New technology comes out. They can be gone in no time. All these things that the market is not aware of today can happen in the future. Okay. What would happen if that life insurance company sends the, under, the application to the underwriter and the underwriter's got a thousand applications there, all of them can be approved. And the underwriter says, I'm gonna take Charlie, I'm gonna take Johnny, I'm gonna take this one because I think they're gonna live longer than what the table is, and we're not gonna bother with the other ones. The guy'd be fired on the spot. Why? Because they wanna get as close to the uh, mortality table. So they take everybody. We wanna get as close to the percentile of the market that we're tracking. We wanna include every company that fits the criteria, not cherry pick, okay? We don't want a people picker as a stock picker, okay? And the insurance company is not going to do that, okay? Get out of the speculative investing. Why should I invest with SmartPlan? SmartPlan uses a Nobel Prize winning method called Modern Portfolio Theory. Harry Markowitz uh, won a Nobel, Nobel Prize for that. We, also, we use institutional funds, not retail funds. Okay? Difference between institutional and retail is institutional funds usually don't have as many people moving out of the market when the market changes. Okay? They're also lower cost. You also have to be, have, when you're investing, you need to have at least a million dollars for each category. So we have, say, 17 categories. That means you need $17 million, except that through us we can get in for lesser amounts. We eliminate the gambling in a portfolio and we will never stop the time the market to look at past performance of some manager. We're looking at the past performance of an asset class, okay? We use third-party custodians such as Swab Institution. Why do we do that? So we don't have a Bernie Madoff. Anybody heard of him? <laughs> okay. We invest in over 12,000 companies in over 40 countries and we provide continuing investor education to all clients at no charge, okay? Investor education, all right, year one, separating myths. True purpose for money, save the investor, save the world. We do these in different orders, not necessarily a better thing. But this one has been my favorite um, because my life changed when I saw this and realized that with structured asset class mutual funds. It answered the uh, secrets. Recipe for the secret sauce. It was it. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Uh, 
I found the answer. Okay. How, have you ever heard of the Gibbs audit? Anybody ever hear of the Gibbs audit? I hadn't either until I found out about it. A Gibbs audit is a global investment performance standard audit. You can't cherry pick your returns. You can't do what a lot of fund companies and insurance companies do, is cherry pick the years. You can't cherry pick the people that you're gonna include in your performance results. You have to include everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Those that got in at the high part and were in at the bottom, or got out somewhere in between. Okay, you include it all. 